So Adam, tell us who you are. My name is uh, Adam Holthouse and I work for Ostimo in the steering uh, DE section. So tell me about that. You got a joystick here to drive this car. What, what's the advantage of having it? And, and I call it a joystick. What do you call it? Uh, our current name for it, it's kind of had an evolution of different names. The current name is the uh, uh, new input device or NID. So probably by next year, it'll probably have a different name. But uh, at this point, that's what that, that's the current name we're calling it. And so the idea with this particular device is that it's gearing towards a more autonomous future. So when the car itself is going to do a lot of the driving with you, you still may need to drive 10, 5 percent of the time. And that's what this is for. So you can get rid of the steering wheel so you don't have the steering wheel here. And now you free up the space for the, the driver because the car is doing most of the work at that point. And so this is what you would use for those other times. Yeah, I, uh, one example I've heard is, you know, you go to a tailgate party and you have to go park your car. So you, exactly. you'd want to have something like that to steer. So, you know, you're getting ready to go to your tailgate party. Your kid left its bike in the driveway. The autonomous car may be like, I don't know what to do. So you need to pull out of your driveway. You get to the road, you hit go, the car takes off. You get to the location, it's a tailgate. There's cars everywhere. You've got to figure out how to park. And so now you need to take over and then you drive and find yourself into a nice parking spot. Now on this car, you you still got something of a steering wheel there, more of a yoke. That's just uh, for what, backup? So really, well, in this car, so we made it, it's a demonstration vehicle. So we had both systems so we can set up so we can demonstrate either of these two technologies. And so in the case of this one, this is the master system. So that way, if you had to take over for whatever reason, we could. But primarily, we want you to drive each of these either way and not yeah. in a combination. Now, what I like about this is you were explaining earlier that you've added sort of a, a non-movable part to it. This this piece right right here this this moves but this does not that's correct so we had some other iterations for this and last year we demonstrated a different one that was kind of a different shape and one of the com complaints we were getting is like it's kind of hard to find center normally when you're driving around the road every day you can see center your steering wheel you know where you're going and how to center out now with this We've added this stationary piece here, and so when you're driving, you can feel it with your fingers. And so now, instead of a visual indication of where center is, you have a tactile feel. So when you're driving, you can feel exactly where center is by having your fingers touch that, that stationary piece. Okay, I'm sure everybody watching this video right now is, okay, enough explanation already. Show us how it drives. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so we're, here we go. So with this device here, it's very easy to make these turns. So we just have to, it's, you don't have to do like a traditional steering where you gotta do a hand over hand to make sharp turns. So it's very easy to pull into a parking space like we will be demonstrating here. And so they can just back on up. And you were telling me earlier that uh, in Japan, you had a professional race driver. That is, take, take this, you, you tell the story. That is correct. In Japan, they had a uh, local or a professional driver uh, do this and they he took various laps and he used a traditional steering system and then he used this new input device. And in Japan, with the new input device, he could do faster lap times because of the ability to make sharp turns and things like that in a relatively quick motion. So we got this big turn, this quick turn right here that we just made. Very easy, we can do it very quickly. And as a human being, we are very sensitive. Our hands are much more sensitive to motion, so we don't need as much time or uh, movement. And so in a steering wheel, our arms are less sensitive. So we got a bit of a slalom run here. Yep. So we've handled the slalom with no problems. So automakers are interested in this? It's an emerging technology. So of course, this is something that, you know, I think really the autonomy 
aspect of the cars need to help catch up to truly utilize this type of technology. When the cars become a little more autonomous and you don't have to pay attention to them as much and they open it up, I think that's when the automotive makers will really be interested in this and will be ready for it. Yeah, but hold on. If you can lap faster with this system, you're going to have the performance crowd all over this. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Do you want to see the automotive industry grow and thrive? So do we. That's why we dedicate our shows to providing the people in the industry with important data and information and access to the people who are driving the industry forward with the guests that we bring on our shows and the interviews that we conduct. But we need your help to continue doing it. That's why I'm asking you to support AutoLine with a YouTube or Patreon membership. It'll get you extra content that will be available only to members, but it will especially make sure that you and AutoLine continue to drive the automotive industry forward.